Well, good morning, Clear Creek family. It's a blessing to be with you guys again for another chapel. Um, today is uh, yet again one of the special days we have here where we have a senior chapel. And Miss uh, Becca Bartels uh, has uh, got to this milestone. And for her senior chapel, um, she's going to share some testimony in her life and also lead us in worship and song um, for the chapel today. So I hope you guys brought your singing voices because we're going to be using those today. So um, with that said, uh, just a few things about Miss Becca that I'd like to share is um, I actually knew her and Jeremy well before they knew me. As you guys know, Miss Carmella, um, who used to be our pianist here and now is on the mission field with uh, Brother Richard, um, would talk all about Becca and Jeremy and uh, talk all about uh, their time here before Clear Creek and after um, they left and came back. And so I told her, I told Miss Carmella that we did an exchange. For them going to the mission field, I had to get Jeremy and Becca back. So uh, so if you guys are truly leaving and graduating as seniors, then I just expect Miss Carmella to you know, come back as soon as you guys go. But with that said, uh, Becca has a heart for the Lord. Uh, she really does love worshiping and praising our Savior. And I know this morning it will be a blessing to your hearts as well as mine. So as we begin this morning, I want to share a scripture, a couple of stories actually first, and then the main scripture that's going to go off of this first song that Becca's going to lead. Um, in Matthew 14, 28 through 33, the story of Peter walking on the water, the main theme of all of that should be faithfulness. The faithfulness to follow Christ even in the middle of a storm. And then when the faith failed, Christ was there to pull him right up. And then you look at the next story, Daniel 3. 8 through 30, the Hebrew children in the furnace. That idea of God being faithful even in the midst of the fire, even in the midst, in that famous statement of even if he does not save us, we will still not bow to your gods. What faith that must have taken. And then Daniel 6 in the lion's den, yet again, boldly going, knowing it was against the law, flinging the windows wide open and looking out and praying, knowing very well what was about to happen and the faithfulness of God to come and shut the mouths of those lions. And then you have 1 Samuel 17, David and Goliath. You see David having that faith that the Lord is the one that's going to fight the battle. And he goes out and he fights that with faith. And then finally, our scripture that I want to read today. And then I'm going to pray and the worship team will come. But Lamentations 3, 22, 23. After thinking through all of these stories, you hear this. The Lord acts of mercy indeed do not end. For his compassions do not fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Amen. Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, as Becca comes to lead this chapel, Lord, in spirit and truth, I pray right now you will dissolve any anxieties and any worries, Lord. Help us focus right now that we are gathering as the body of Christ to worship you at the foot of your throne and give you glory and honor and praise for it all. And God, this morning as we're about to sing this new song that most of us may not have heard that talks about being faithful. Lord, help us dwell on these stories of old, God, that you have been faithful then and you're faithful now because you are the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And we thank you, Father, for that truth. So bless us now in this time of worship. In Jesus' holy and precious name we pray this. Amen. Amen. So before Dr. Nix actually goes and sits down, uh, I don't know if all of you know this. Please come back up here. But it is Dr. Nix's birthday today. <laughs> Once upon a time, a very special person was born who was destined to change the world. <laughs> Calm down, it's not you, it's Jesus. I think he point you to have a happy birthday. <laughs> and most of us, if not all, have signed it from singers. So if they have it, they can sign it afterwards. Oh, thank you. Guys. I appreciate it. No problem. <laughs> and now we want to sing happy birthday. Um, and that's the reason Michaela's here.
so if it's a little rocky, that's why. <laughs> is racing deep inside my chest when I'm underneath the weight of anxiousness when my fear is raging I can't catch my
first time we were here is because, one, I don't think we were doing what God had told us to do, and two, we had a lot going on, and so we just, we kind of, I, I think, pulled a Jonah of just running the opposite direction, and we ended up going to Maine for a few months, and then for my brother, and while we were there, Jeremy and I had lost a child, and it was devastating, and it was really hard. And we realized in that moment that we should have been closer to family because if we would have had family there and we would have been doing what God had told us to do, even through that, it would have been a lot easier. So we, we went through that, and shortly after that, we decided to come back to Middlesboro. We still weren't here at Clear Creek. And we decided to live there and work in secular jobs, and we weren't in ministry. And both of us were miserable. We hated it. Um, we never saw each other. He constantly worked in the daytime. I worked in the evenings on the weekends. And we just knew that we weren't doing what God had for us. And so we prayed about it, and we felt like we needed to be in foster care. And so that's what we did. We started foster care in Middlesboro, and it still wasn't where God had us. So we just continued to pray. And most of you know, um, long story short, after some time of praying, we ended up getting a job offer at the Arkansas Baptist Children's Home. And... My mom, actually, of all people, was the one that sent me the request for this job. And I told Jeremy, I said, it's got to be a, a God thing if my mom's sending it because she did not want us to go anywhere. She wanted us close to her and close to home. And so we applied. We went down. We interviewed. The interview went great. The next day, we interviewed, and the director told us, he said, you have everything on paper going against you. You do not have a degree. I was 21 at the time. He was 23. We had no children of our own. We were young, and so they just, they said, here on paper, it doesn't look good. You have no experience. And so we said, we feel like this is where God wants us. If you don't want us here, that's fine. But if, if this is where God has us, then we'll work through it. And the director just said, point blank, he said, we want you here. I'm just telling you, on paper, we got to get you some more stuff on here to up your resume. So we want to hire you. So we decided to come back. We sold everything that we had. And whatever didn't fit in our car and Carmel and Richard's car, it stayed here. And, and so we moved that down, and we lived there for four and a half years. In that time span, we had 61 foster kids, and we had one foster grandbaby. And um, during that time, I decided to go back to school online, and we just knew it was time to come back here. So, again, we prayed, and we just followed the Lord's will, and we decided to come back and finish school. And our Kids at the time were placed in an adoptive home, and so everything was in God's timing. So this whole worship set is not to bring me glory or to just share with you my story. It's to bring God glory. And so the songs I picked out, I specifically picked them out to show you, um, one, that God has been faithful, but also that he provides, that he is good. Um, and because of that, we need to draw close to him, and we need to praise his name. So as we go into this next song, we're actually going to have Dr. Smith come up here and he'll read the next scripture. And throughout the whole service, I'm going to have different professors come up and read scripture that goes with the songs for you to understand the theology behind them. Psalm 81, verse 16, but you would be fed with the finest of wheat, with honey from the rock. The Lord says, I would satisfy you. And in Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 13, it says, He made him ride on the heights of the land and fed him with the fruits of the field. He nourished him with honey from the rock and with oil from the flinty crag. Okay, and if you would stand, we're going to sing the song, Honey in the Rock. Thirsty for a living well 
only you can satisfy. Sweetness at the mercy seat, taste it, it's not hard to see. Only you can satisfy. There's honey in the rock, water in the stone, manna on the ground, no matter where I go. I don't need to worry now that I know. Everything I need, you've got. There's honey in the rock, purpose in your plan, power in the blood, healing in your hands. Start it flowing when you said it is done. Everything you did is enough. Freedom, where the Spirit is, found me in the wilderness. You will always satisfy. There's honey in the rock, water in the stone, and on the ground, no matter where I go. I don't need to worry now that I know. Everything I need, you've got. There's honey in the rock, purpose in your plan, power in the blood, healing in your hands. Start it flowing when you said it is done. Everything you did is enough. I keep looking, I keep finding. You keep giving, keep providing. I have all that I need. You are all that I need. I keep praying, you keep providing. I keep praising, you keep proving. I have all that I need. You are all that I need. I keep looking, I keep finding. You keep giving, keep providing. I have all that I need. You are all that I need. I keep praying, you keep proving. I keep praising, you keep proving. Honey in the rock, water in the stone, manna on the ground, no matter where I go. I don't need to worry now that I know. Everything I need, you got. There's honey in the rock, purpose in your plan, power in the blood, healing in your hands. Start it flowing when you said it is done. singers make their way down. I'm going to have Dr. Lucas come up and pray and read scripture. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be here to worship you. We thank you that uh, Becca's finally made it to the place where she is going to be graduating being able to move on and serve you in new ways and on new fields. Father, we pray uh, blessings upon, upon her as she uh, moves forward with those endeavors. And Father, we pray that uh, everything that's done and everything that's said here today brings glory to Christ. Yes. May we lift him up because you tell us in your word when he's lifted up, we'll be drawn to him. 
And Father, yesterday's manna was good, but we need manna today as well. Thank you again for your grace and mercy, and it's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Psalm 89, 1 through 8, and then 20 through 28 says, I will sing of the steadfast love of the Lord forever. With my mouth I will make known your faithfulness to all generations. For I said, steadfast love will be built up forever. In the heavens you will establish your faithfulness. You have said, I've made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David, my servant. I will establish your offspring forever and build your throne for all generations. Selah. Let the heavens praise your wonders, O Lord, your faithfulness in the assembly of the holy ones. For who in the skies can be compared to the Lord? Who among the heavenly beings is like the Lord? God greatly to be feared in the council of the holy ones, and awesome above all who are around him. O Lord God of hosts, who is mighty as you are, O Lord, with your faithfulness all around you. I have found David my servant, with my holy oil I have anointed him, so that my hand shall be established with him, my arm also shall strengthen him. The enemy shall not outwit him, the wicked shall not humble him. I will crush his foes before him and strike down those who hate him. My faithfulness and my steadfast love shall be with him, and in my name shall his horn be exalted. I will set his hand on the sea, his right hand on the rivers. He shall cry to me, You are my Father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. And I will make him the firstborn, the highest of the kings of the earth. My steadfast love I will keep for him forever, and my covenant shall stand firm for him. This next song, y'all have heard it before I did it um, a few months ago for my music chapel. It's Goodness of God. Um, we want to do this as a special again, um, but also especially at this time with the situation with Alistair and Alan and Amy and their whole family. Um, I know a lot of people are grieving, and we know that there are quite a few others that have lost loved ones here recently, and a lot of people have been sick and stuff like that. Uh, so again, just give God glory, and if you would like to, you can sit down and just listen to the song, or if you want to come and pray, feel free to do that. Um, and any time during the service, if you would like to come up and pray, you can, or you know, just take somebody by the hand and pray with them, because um, we just want to give glory and worship to God this morning. <laughs>
thank you for your goodness and your mercy that is just never ending. We thank you, Lord God, that uh, despite all the tragedy that we may face in our lives, God, that you are present, you are with us, and God, you are faithful. I uh, just thank you for this time of worship that we've had. I pray that you just continue to bless the time as we worship together. God, I pray that we would just remember that worship doesn't just take place in this chapel, but it takes place in our lives, Lord through the time that we spend with you, through the time that we pray, to the time that we minister to others, may we be a living sacrifice, as your word says, which is holy and acceptable unto you, Lord. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, we'll have Dr. Goodman come up and read his scripture. In Psalm 25... In verse 14, we read these words. The friendship of the Lord is for those who fear Him, and He makes known to them His covenant. And then in James chapter number 4 and verse number 8, we find these words. Draw near to God, and He will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts. You double minded. Please stand for this next song. Draw me close to you.
this time we'll have Dr. DeLand come and his, read his scripture. Paul states in Philippians chapter 2, verse number 9, Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name. And in Acts chapter number 4, verse number 12, the Bible says, And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. So these next two songs, we're going to do just that. We're going to praise Jesus' name. The first song is I Speak Jesus, and the second one is Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. So if you would, sing with us. I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Jesus in the streets, Jesus in the streets. 
speak the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind. Cause I know there is peace within your presence. I speak Sorry I didn't have my Bible. I wasn't supposed to read scripture, but God reminded me of something that happened 10 years ago, and I need to read this scripture. Um, it's Matthew uh, chapter 6, verse number 25. He says, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life what you shall eat, what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall uh, what you shall." What you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on, is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they root, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them, and ye not much better are ye not much better than they. Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for your raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toll not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What you shall eat, or what you shall drink, or wherewithal shall you be clothed. For after all these things the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself sufficient, unto the day is the evil thereof. i just like to say one thing. What God taught me through Clear Creek was to trust him. You all have heard my stories. God completely shut me off of everything, of all resources. And it wasn't too bad to live by faith here, but it's even worse when you go out there when there's no help and you don't have prayer partners, you don't have people to see the world like you do. And I was in a spot there one week to where I don't remember what we was going on, what was going on here 10 years ago, just right after I graduated. And something was going on here in chapel and I came back to visit. And it was just as soon as I graduated. I met Rebecca. She was 17 years old when we was when I first met her. And so I remember coming to chapel that day, and I, I didn't have any money for lunch. 
And, you know, I'm a grown man at that time, and, you know, I, I didn't have a job, but I was just seeking the Lord of what to do. But but for some reason, that, that week, I didn't have any money, and I didn't have any money for lunch. And I thought, Lord, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. And the Lord said, just trust me. And so he was continuing to, to teach me to trust him one day at a time. And, you know, everybody was leaving out and going to lunch, and I thought, well, I don't know where I'm going to eat. I'm just going to leave. And Rebecca came to me, and she said, come over to the house. We've got a big lunch. Prepared. And uh, this is my life verse, it's Matthew 6, I don't know how you get a life verse, but it's the one that keeps appearing, so that's what I claim. And I go to her house, and, or your all's apartment, and I sit down at the table, and that verse was on that dish that I eat out of that day. And God reassured me through this young lady that he was going to take care of me. I forgot all about that until I sat down back there. I know it wasn't on schedule. If you all get mad at me, I just father the Lord. <laughs> let, us, let us pray. Most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. I thank you for Rebecca and her life and her friendship and what her and Jeremy means to me. I pray that you bless them as uh, they take off in their journey ahead. And, uh, Lord, you just bless their families and just bless their uh, journey and their adventure ahead that you've prepared for them. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah.